Today we're going to work on a an anniversary clock. Normally I don't like working on these because I don't take them apart like maybe a clock shop would. But this video and the, all the clocks I do are for possibly the home person that has a clock and didn't want to take it into a shop. They want to try to fix it themselves. So that's what my channel is about. Part of it. Anyway, this anniversary clock. Now this one does have the plexiglass or whatever cover. I normally don't like these. They can stretch up easily. And usually when I'm at a thrift shop, I'll find one that is glass or I'll find, believe it or not, one of these that are battery operated and they'll have a glass, so I'll exchange it. I don't think it hurts the value. I think it actually increases the value of the clock when it has a glass a dome for it. Now this clock here, just to show you real quick, Let's zoom in on it a little bit. Okay, on here it does have the key wind, in which these are a much better clock because of the key wind. And also, when you transport these clocks, if you have a better one, this one here is just up there, but it's not hanging on its wire right now because I have this little lever here. I was able to slide over and it picks this up and catches it. Now underneath here, underneath the base sometimes, that's where you'll find one of these. You'll slide it over and it'll lift this up and make it tight so you can transport it. The main reason why is because these things, let me pop this off real quick. Now this is plastic on this one. Some of them have screws. You just squeeze it in and these little catches come off. And there's a fine wire here that holds this pendulum. Let me bring the camera closer and you might be able to tell. The fine wire that's on here. Just back here, let me put my old dirty screwdriver. It's not really dirty, it's just well used. There's a fine wire along here. Now that's actually, uh, I do believe you'd call it the spring that uh, has us rotate back and forth. And it's a, actually it's a flat wire in here that gives a spring It's actually a flat wire in here, and they have different sizes depending on what kind of clock you have, and that's what gives it the momentum to actually turn. And up above, up above inside here, this little wire here in point, this here at the tip clicks back and forth. And it's spring loaded by where you have wound it, and that's where the spring is. Now this clock, my brother was able to pick up at the Goodwill store. I don't remember what he paid for it. I'm going to say it was between six to twelve dollars, something like that, and didn't run. So I plan on taking this clock apart and cleaning it. And the rough part for me, or the part I don't like, is the spring here. I actually never really get it opened up, so I'm just hoping through the holes it has that the fluid, clean, clock cleaning fluid, gets inside here and cleans it. And I'll flush it out the best I can, and then I'll actually uh, put the oil or grease inside there 
to make the spring uh, slide by each other and keep the tension on onto the clock works. So also do a little close up of the brand name of this clock. Kudos or Kundo. K U N D O. It is a very nice clock. Has a little flowers around it. And this clock also is wound once a year if you know anything but an anniversary clock. So that's what kind of makes these difficult is it does have to run all year long. Now on the pendulum obviously that goes around you don't have to worry about the wind stopping it or anything. That's why they have these domes here. So you could have a fan blowing and it does not affect that. So let's get into this thing. So to show you, this is the lock that holds the pendulum and you have to lift it up inside there. Let me hold on to this, click it back, clear back out of the way and you can drop the pendulum and then on a, this has to be really level. On a level surface that should keep going back and forth quite a bit. These legs that the, are on the clock, they turn. That's how, and that has three of them, that's how you adjust your clock to make it level. Now I notice this one's got a rubber foot. These others lost their rubber foot, but realistically it's not any big deal. Now the rubber foot keeps it from sliding around on the shelf or on the desk or wherever you set this thing. Now we're going to go ahead and take the wire off. There's this place here where you can unscrew. Take the screw out and that should just pop right out. Right there goes around a rod that helps this thing click back and forth. And I'm not going to take this all the way out. It didn't need to. But it does have where it's hooking on. And if you have to change the wire, make sure you get the right brand of clock. Because like I say, there are different ones in here. And so now that I have the pendulum taken off, I see to hold these hands on, there's a little keeper in here. And this here is a wedge. Don't lose it, put it in your glass. And of course there's a concaved little washer, I guess we'll call it, that holds a clock. Let's bring this a little closer. So now that we have that off, your minute hand does have a square hole. Your hour hand should just pop right off now.
So to get the works out, underneath here, if you can see it or not, there's let me use a pointer. There's a nut here, there's a nut here. You unscrew and this all should come apart. Now we're free from the case and this would be a good time to give it a good wipe down if you'd like to. Really clean this up if you can. You notice how shiny this is and then this gets dull. Now I don't know whether they, to me it looks like they painted this but it could be just the natural coloring of age to it. Okay, I need to unwind this spring. So I have this tool here. And they all have different size key sizes to it. What's meant for is for you to turn this as if you're winding it. And then right here is the catch. That uh and you can use the key, but be very careful because this key that sets on here as soon as you start unwinding this or catch that let me get this thing set Just, there we go you say be very careful you can only let a few go at a time and make sure that thing catches but this thing will tear you up if it decides to take off on you which I'm not going to attempt using that one you can see how that sucker is turning around there be very careful let it go slow Okay, right at the end there. So the spring is all filled up in here now. And uh, just before I dunk this thing, I'll probably wind it up a little bit because I want for sure the cleaning fluid to get into that little hole there. I don't necessarily want, sorry, I don't necessarily want this whole frame to go into the fluid because this is nice and shiny which would be shiny probably still but I'm quite certain it has a protective like a shellac or something uh, coating on it to keep it shining so I think I'm gonna just have to go ahead and undo these screws here and pay attention to how my gears are and what I probably end up doing is taking a picture of it to remember exactly how each one of these little gears go inside here. this over here and I have better lighting in there I need to pay attention to where each one of those gears go so I'll probably take a picture of it because realistically this is the main thing 
I need to clean and I'll go ahead and clean each individual gear also. So let me t carefully take this thing apart and see if we can get it back together again. So that means I need to undo these four screws here to pull it apart. These are the gears that were inside the, just under the face. They're quite dirty, so we're going to go ahead and obviously throw them into the basket to have them cleaned. But I did notice uh, on the back it has these deals here that you turn and get them to come through the holes so you can take it apart but already I'd suggest the normal person that has one of these unless they're good with their hands and whatnot don't take one of these clocks apart <laughs> so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and I have these in the basket I'm gonna go ahead and get them soaking and this part here I might have to wait till it stops raining outside, but uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Q-tip with that cleaning fluid and clean these, or I just might try some good, good hot soapy water in the sink and get them clean, because I, like I said, I don't really want to, I mean, you already can tell that, that's the inside of the works there, that sheen look to it. And I don't want to damage any of the shinier parts, so it might be just soap and water on these. So let me get those soaking. So let me get these soaking and mess with it a little bit, get them cleaned up, and we'll get this clock back together again and see if it still runs. Okay, it's been 24 hours. I let the clockwork soak into the cleaning fluid and now I'm going to put it together, but I'm not going to put it on camera because I need to go watch the pictures I took to make sure I get the camera right. But I want to stress when if you're going to even attempt this to take that uh, spring that you wind up with the key and make sure to flush it out as many times as you can and because you're trying to get all the oil out all the grease whatever happens to be in there get the dirt out and you want it as clean as possible so you can re-oil or grease it and get it to work for a full year that's the main problem with these clocks is that'll eventually gum up in there and then the springs cannot slide past each other and will not run for the full year, if at all. So anyway, I'll be back. But I just got back from my brother's place. We had delicious coffee over there. And he's at the thrift shop and found one of these anniversary clocks that was a battery movement kind. And that would be Goodwill. Well, it wasn't Goodwill, it was uh, visiting nurses. But they were having a sale, and 
It shows that he paid $6.99. Well, that's what the price is. But it was a half price day, so he got this for $3.50. It's a nice glass uh, dome. So now we can get rid of, as you can see, the plastic dome, how it's not as clear. But they're the same size. So now we have an upgrade to the anniversary clock. Cha-ching! Obviously, it's the next day, and I did get this back together again, and it was a good thing I took pictures to see where each of these gears went, because I would have never got it back together again. And that's why I did it off camera, because I was watching the pictures I took, so that way I could get it back together. Woo. So anyway, I have this all put together, oiled, and now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it back on the clock and get the face put on and whatnot. So anyway, let's get at her. So I have my works here. I have this all ready to go on. These here are supposed to pop back in the holes and then you turn these a quarter turn in order to make it stay on the works. So I'm going to go ahead and set this on here and I'm going to go ahead and get those turned so this is ready to go back onto its framework. Okay, I got the face hooked on Got those three deals turned. And now all I have to do is set this on here. And we have the screw holes here so you can put these in. Now those are snugged up good. I would say it's time to put the pendulum on. Which also has this piece here. This is what hooks onto the wire right there. Or the spring I guess we could call it and through the slot right here is what hits the little arm that keeps the clock ticking. But we'll put this on later. First we want to get this into place. Now that that's locked into place, there's no pressure on here. And I can hopefully easily get this into place.
And now we can go ahead and put the hands on. And what you want to do is put the minute hand on first, because this is not a chiming clock. You just want to get the hours right. Okay, I wound the clock. I have the wire installed, the little foot installed inside here. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put the cover, the glass dome back on because I want to see if this thing's going to run or how long it's going to run. Now my table's not very level, so underneath two of the feet I did uh, slide some screwdrivers underneath the feet to adjust it to where the center of this pendulum that's going around it's pretty close to being in the center of that little cup. Now the main thing there is you never want to touch the side of the cup so you can be off a little bit you have room to play. But anyway there she is let me it's dirty, but let me get the glass dome on here. So there we have it. So there we have it. I still got to put this back on. That covers the spring that goes down to the pendulum. And but anyway, the main thing is, did I get this thing to? Did I get it cleaned and running? Like I say, I don't like working on these mainly because of the main spring in this clock that you can't actually take apart and clean it. So. Let's just check it out. Maybe I should set it at the right time so we can see where we're at there. The other thing is on this, to change, take this off again. I'm gonna mess it up or whatever. Well, let me, let me bring the camera over to the other side. So if you have to adjust the the time to make it go faster or slower on top of this pendulum if you look really close you'll see a plus and a minus and you just have to turn it whether you want it to slow down or speed up let me see if I can get a closer view right here and we're getting there okay that's as close as I can get Right on top of here, like I say, there is a plus and minus. Look around on your clock because some of them are different. This clock happens to be right up here. You hold the pendulum gently and turn this dial right here. So let me set the time and see if I conquered this clock. <laughs> 